This tutorial is to help you get to know the Android tablet outside of the Perfect Stitch or the robotic software. The first things you will need to be familiar with are the Android icons located in the bottom left corner of the screen. These icons allow you to navigate to and from programs on the tablet. The back arrow allows you to go back a screen. This function has been disabled in the Perfect Stitch and robotic programs so that you don't accidentally bump it and lose your work, but will work with other programs. The Android Home icon will take you to the Android desktop. The Windows icon will display in small windows all of the open applications. From here, you can reopen a program. You can also use this icon to kill or close programs. These icons are important not only because they allow you to navigate, but because they are often used in troubleshooting. To close a program, select the Android Home icon to bring up the desktop. Then select the Windows icon to bring up all the open applications, and swipe the application you wish to close off the screen. This action is dependent on your tablet. It will be either be up and down or left and right. Keep in mind that in order to close a program, you will need to go to the desktop by selecting the Android Home icon. If the application is open, it will not show up in the active Windows screen. The next feature that we will look at is the application window. To access the application window, you will need to locate the icon with six small white squares. This will either be located in the top right corner or at the bottom in the center. Select this icon to bring up all of the applications on the tablet. There are a lot of preloaded applications here, so we will only go over a few. The first program is the Perfect Stitch program. Selecting this icon will reopen the Perfect Stitch program or robotic program if you do not have a Perfect Stitch regulator. The next application is Quick Support. This is often used with troubleshooting with our technical support teams. This allows our technicians to log on, see, and even take control of your tablet. This does require a Wi-Fi connection on the tablet, which we'll go over in a moment. The last application is the Settings application. Settings will allow you to customize your experience with the tablet and also allows you to connect to your home's Wi-Fi network. In the Settings menu, you have the options that you can manipulate on the left. Touch your finger to the left box and slide it up to scroll through the options. When you want to go back to the top, touch your finger to the screen and slide down. As you select options on the left, customizable options will appear on the right. Let's first take a look at how to connect to a wireless network. To connect to the Wi-Fi, you will need to make sure that the Wi-Fi is set to the on position. The tablet will search for wireless connections. You will see available connections in the menu on the right. Select your wireless network from the list and enter your Wi-Fi password to connect. This password is the password given to you by your internet provider or the password that you have set for your wireless connection. Some of the options that you find in settings are fairly technical, and I don't recommend changing them unless you are familiar with the Android tablet and know what you're doing. But I do want to highlight a few settings that are good to know. Sound allows you to control the system volume and change what actions make noise. Display allows you to customize the brightness of the tablet and change the wallpaper. You can also change font size here if you wanted your words to appear a bit larger. The last setting we will go over is the date and time setting. Date and time allows you to change your time or time zone and choose how the date and time are displayed. In order to use some of the Android's features like the robotics ask us feature, you will need to input a Gmail account. Select add account to add your Gmail account to the tablet. Then select email from the list. You will then be prompted to enter your email address and your password. Use your Gmail account username and password to log in. Once you have filled out both fields, select next to finish logging in. The last feature we will go over in this tutorial is how to create a shortcut. In the application window, press and hold the icon that you wish to place on the desktop. The desktop will appear and you will be able to move the icon where you want it. This has been an overview of the Android's basic functionality. Thank you for watching.